Okay, welcome back to SuperCloud 2, live here in Palo Alto, California for our live stage performance. SuperCloud 2 is our second SuperCloud event. We're going to get these out as fast as we can every couple months. It's our second one. You'll see two and three this year. I'm John Furrier, my host Dave Vellante. A panel here to break down the SuperCloud momentum, the wave, and the developer impact. We're bringing back Vittorio. Viaringo, who's a VP for cross cloud services at VMware, and Sarbit Joal, industry influencer and analyst at Stack Payne, his company, uh, Cube alumni and influencer. Uh, Sarbit, great to see you. Vittorio, thanks for coming back. Nice to be here. My pleasure. Vittorio, you just gave a keynote. We, we unpacked the cross cloud services, what VMware is doing, how you guys see it, not just from VMware's perspective, but VMware looking out broadly at the industry and developers came up and you were like, developers, developers, developers. Kind of a goof on the Steve Ballmer, famous meme that everyone's seen. This is a huge, sorry, sorry a big piece of it. The developers are the canary in the coal mines. They're the ones who are being asked to code the digital transformation, which is fully business transformation. And with the market the way it is right now in terms of the accelerated technology, every enterprise grade business models changing, the technology is evolving, the builders are kind of, they, they want to go faster. <laughs> I, I'm saying they're stuck in a way, but that's my opinion, um, but there's a lot of growth. Yep. The impact, they got to get released up and let it go. Those developers need to accelerate faster. It's been a big part of productivity and the, and the conversations we've had. So developer impact is huge on SuperCloud. What's your, what, what do you guys think about this? We'll start with you, Sarbi. Yeah, actually developers are the masons of the digital empires, I call them, right? They lay every brick and, and build all these big empires. It, on the left side of the SDLC, or the, you know, when you look at the system operations, no, developer is number one cost from the economic side of things. And from technology side of things, they are tech hungry people. They are developers for that reason, because developer nights are long, hours are long, they forget about how, when to eat, you know, like I've, I've been a developer, I still code. So you you want to keep them happy, you want to hug your developers, we always say that, right? Uh, Victoria said that right earlier. Um, the, the key is to, in this context, in the super cloud context, is that developers don't mind mucking around with, mucking around with platforms or APIs or new languages, but they hate the infrastructure part. That's a fact. They don't want to muck around with servers. They, it's, it's friction for them. It, it is like they don't want to muck around even, even with VMs. So they want the programmability to the nth degree. They want to automate everything. So that's how they think. And uh, cloud is the programmable infrastructure, industrialization of infrastructure in many ways. So they are happy with what, where we're going. And we need more abstraction layers for some developers, by the way, I, I have this sort of thinking frame for the last year or so, not all developers are the same, right? So if you are a developer at an ISV, you behave differently. If you are a developer at a typical enterprise, you behave differently, or you are, you are forced to behave differently because you're not well, writing developers, software. Developers have changed. I mean, Vittorio, you and I were talking earlier on their keynote, and, and this is kind of a key point is, what is a developer these days? If everything is software enabled, I mean, even hardware interviews we do with NVIDIA and, and Amazon and other people building silicon, they all say the same thing. It's software <laughs> on a chip. Um, so you're seeing the role of software up and down the stack, and the role of the stack is changing. The old days of full stack developer, what does that even mean? I mean, the cloud is a half a stack kind of right there. So, you know, developers are, are certainly more agile, but cloud native, I mean, VMware is the epitome of operations, IT operations, and the Tanzu initiative you guys started, you went after the developers to look at them and ask them questions. What do you need? How do you transform the, the ops from virtualization? Again, back to your point. So this hardware abstraction, what is software? What is cloud native? It's kind of messy equation these days. How do you, how do you guys grok all that? I, I would argue that developers don't want a super cloud. I drop that up there. So why not? Because developers, they once they get comfortable in AWS or Google, because they're doing some AI stuff, which is you know very trendy right now, or they are in uh, IBM, any of, of, of the hyperscaler. Professional developers, system developers, they love that stuff, right? Yeah, they don't. Uh, uh, the, the infrastructure gets in the way, but they're just. The problem is, and I think the super cloud should be driven by the operators, because as we discussed, the operators have been left behind. 
uh, because they're busy, they're busy <laughs> with day-to-day -day jobs. And, and in most cases, IT is centralized, developers are in the business units, yeah. right? So they're going, they, they get the mandate from the top, say, the, our bank they're competing against, they, they gave uh, teenagers or like uh, young people the, the ability to do all these, these new things online and Venmo and all this integration. Where are we? Oh yeah, we can do it. And then they build it and they deploy it. Okay, we caught up. And now the, 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 the operators are back in the private cloud trying to keep the backend system running. And so I think the super cloud is needed for the, primarily initially for the operators to get in front of the developers, fit in the workflow, but lay the foundation so it's so, secure. So I love this thinking because I love the riff because the riff points to what is the target audience for the value proposition. And if you're a developer, SuperCloud enables you, so you shouldn't have to deal with SuperCloud. Exactly. What you're saying is get the operating environment or operating system done properly, whether it's architecture, building the platform. This comes back to architecture platform conversations. What is the future platform? Is it a vendor supplied or is it customer created platform? So developers want best of breed is what you just said. Yeah. Right, and operators, because developers don't want to deal with governance, they don't want to deal nope. with security, they don't want to deal with spinning up infrastructure, that's the role of the operator, but that's where SuperCloud enables, to John's point, the developers. So, to your, to your question, is it a platform where the platform vendor is responsible for the architecture, or, there, or is it an architectural standard that spans multiple clouds that has to emerge? I, based, based on what you just presented earlier, Victoria, you are the determinant of the architecture, it's got to be open, but, but, but you guys determine that, whereas the nirvana is, oh no, it's all open and it just kind of works. Yeah, <laughs> so f first of all, let's all level set on one thing. You cannot tell developers what to do. Right, At Agreed. least great developers, right? You cannot tell them what to do. See, that's, <laughs> what, that's what I, I want to uh, sort of- You can tell them what's possible. There's a rebuttal on that. If you tell them what's possible, they'll, they'll test it, they'll look at it, but if you try to jam it down the yeah, throat, you can't tell them how to do and it. And let, let me your point. answer the question that we really yeah, yeah. So I think we need to build an architect, help them build an architecture, but it cannot be proprietary. It has to be built on what works in the cloud. And so what works in the cloud today is Kubernetes, is a you know, number of different open source projects that you need to enable and then provide, use this. But when I first got exposed to Kubernetes, I said, Hallelujah, we had a runtime that works the same everywhere, only to realize there are 12 different distributions. So that's where we come in, right? And, or, and other vendors come in to say, hey, no, we, we can make them all look the same, so you still use Kubernetes, but we give you a place to build, uh, to set those operation policies once, so that you don't create friction for the developers, because that's the last thing you want to do. Yeah, actually, coming back to the same point, not all developers are the same, right? So if you're an ISV developer, you want to go to the lowest sort of level of the infrastructure and, and you want to shave off the milliseconds from to get that performance, right? If you're working at AWS, you are doing that. If you're working at, at scale at Facebook, you're doing that. At Twitter, you're doing that. But when you go to um, DMV in Kansas City, you're not doing that, right? So your developers are different in nature. They are given certain parameters to work with certain sort of constraints on the budget side. They are educated at a different level as well. Like they, they don't go to that nth degree of that sort of uh, automation, if you will. So you cannot have the broad stroking of developers. We are talking about the citizen developer these days. Um, that's a, a, a extreme. You mean low this, code? Yeah, no yeah code. low code, no code, yeah. On the extreme side. On one side, that's citizen developers. On the left side is the professional developers. Uh, when you say developers, you your mind goes to the professional developers, like the hardcore developers, they love the flexibility, you know, I'm well, one app of those. developers too, I mean. App, app developers, yeah. yeah. But you're right, app, a lot of Infrastructure, uh, platform developers, app developers, yes. But there are a lot of customers, it's a spectrum you're saying. Yeah, a lot of spectrum. customers don't want to deal with that muck. Yeah. You know, like you said, AWS, Twitter, the sophisticated developers do, but but there's a whole suite of, of, of developers yeah. out there that just want tools that, that, that are abstracted. Within a company, within a company, mm -hmm. like how I see the super cloud is, 
there shouldn't be anything which blocks the developers, like their view of the world of the future. Like if, if, if you're blocked as a developer, like if some, something comes in front of you, and you, you, you are not a developer anymore, believe me. So you will go somewhere else. <laughs> First so of all, I'm You will leave the company, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you quit. Yeah, you will quit, you will, you will go where the action is, where there's no sort of blockage there. So like if you put in front of them a, like a huge amount of abstraction, it, it, they don't like it. So they don't well, the idea of a developer, back it, to let's, let's get into, because you mentioned platform, you're hearing the term platform engineering now, yeah. platform developer. You know, I remember back, in, and I think there's still a, a term used today, but when I graduated with a computer science degree, we were called software engineers, mm -hmm. right? Um, do people use that term, software engineering? Or is it software development? Or are they the same? Are well, they different? I think so a, it, who's it, engineering what? Is it, are they engineering or are they developing? Well, both? I think it's the, you made a great point. There is a spectrum of engineering. I, 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 I was blessed to work with Adam Bosworth. Um, that is the guy that created um, some of the abstraction layer like Visual Basic yeah. and Microsoft Access. And he had this all, he made his whole career thinking about this layer. And he always talked about the professional developers, the developers that you know, give, him, give him a user manual, maybe just go at the APIs or build anything right from system engine go down there. And then through abstraction, you get the, uh, more, the more the procedural logic type of engineers, the people that used to be able to write uh, procedural logic and visual basic and so on and so forth. I think those developers right now um, are a little cut out of the, of the picture. There are some no code, low code environment that, that are maybe getting some traction. But I, had a, I caught up with Adam uh, Bosworth two weeks ago in, in New York and I asked him, what's happening? this higher level developers. And you know what he's told me? And he's always a little bit out there. So I'm going to use his thought uh, process here. He says, chap, uh, GPT. I mean, the, the, we'll get to a point where the, this high level procedural logic will be written by um, uh, computers. Com computers. Yeah. And so they, we may not need as many at the high level, but we still need the engineers down there. And the point is, uh, the, the operation needs to get in front of them. But wait, wait, you've seen the chat GPT meme. <laughs> I don't know, it's a Dilbert thing where it's like, time to, ta ta yeah, yeah, time I, to I develop that. the, I the, the code, yeah. five minutes. <laughs> time to decode, you know, to, to <laughs> debug. Debug, debug, debug the code, it's like five hours. So, you know, the whole equation. Well, this flipped. is, this but chat you know, GPT is a hot wave. Everyone's been talking about it because I think it illustrates something that's next gen feels next gen, it's, it's, and it's just getting started, so it's going to get better. I mean, people are throwing stones at it, but I think it's amazing. It's the equivalent of me seeing the browser for the first time. You know, like, wow, this is really compelling. This is like, this is game changing. It's not just keyword chatbots. It's like, this is real, this is next level. And I think the super cloud wave that people are getting behind points to that. And I think the question of ops and dev comes up because I think if you limit the infrastructure opportunity for a developer, I think they're going to be handicapped. I mean, that's a general, my opinion, the thesis is you give more aperture to developers, more choice, yeah. more capabilities, more good things could happen, policy. And that's why you're seeing the, the convergence of networking people, virtualization talent, operational talent, get into the conversation because I think it's an infrastructure engineering opportunity. I think, I think this is a seminal moment in a new stack that's emerging from an infrastructure, software, virtualization, low code, no code layer that will be completely programmable by things like the next chat GPT or something different. But yet still the mechanics and the plumbing will still need engineering. Oh yeah. So there's still going to be more stuff coming on. Yeah, we have, with the cloud, we have made the, the, the infrastructure programmable. And you give the programmability to the programmer, they will, be very creative with that. And so we are being very creative with our infrastructure now. And on top of that, we are being very creative with the the silicon now, right? So we, we talked about that. That's part of it, by the way. So you write the code to the particular silicon now. And the sil on the flip side, the silicon is built for certain use cases for AI, inference and all that. You saw this at CES. Yeah, I, I saw that at CES. The, the, the scenario is this. Um, the the Bosch. I spoke to Bosch. I spoke to uh, John Deere. I spoke to AWS guys. They were yeah. showcasing their technology there, and I was spoke to Azure guys as well. So the Bosch is a, a good example. So they are building. They are right now using AWS. I have the that interview on camera. I will put it some sometime later on <laughs> on there <laughs> online. So 
Uh, they, they are using AWS on the back end, back end now, but Bosch is the number one, uh, uh, number one or number two, depending on what day it is of the year, uh, supplier of the components to componentry to the auto industry. So, the, and they are creating a platform for our auto industry. So is Qualcomm actually, by the way, with the Snapdragon. So they told me that customers, their customers, BMW, Audi, all, all the manufacturers, they demand the, the diversity of the back end. Like they don't want all, they, yeah. all of them don't want to go to AWS. So they want the choice on the back end. So whatever they cook in the middle has to work. They have to sprinkle the, the data for the data sovereignty uh, side because they have, they have Chinese car makers as well. And for, you know, for other reasons, competitive reasons, and like, well, well, we'll well, never use it. I mean, people don't go to AWS, right? people so. don't go to AWS either for political reasons or like competitive reasons or specific use cases. But for the most part, generally, I haven't met anyone who hasn't gone first choice with AWS, but that's me personally. No, no, but, but, but they're, they're building. The point is the developer wants choice at the back end is what, I, what I'm hearing, but yeah. then finish that thought. Their developers want the choice. Uh, they, they want the choice on the back end, number one, because the customers are asking for it. In this yep. case, the customers are asking for, for it, right? But the, the, the customer's requirements actually drive, their economics drives the, the, that, that decision making, right? So in the middle, they have to, they're forced to cook up some solution which is vendor neutral on the back end or multi-cloud in nature. So yeah. every, I mean, I think every that's Nirvana. I don't think, I personally don't see that happening right now. I mean, I don't see the parity with clouds. So I think that's a challenge. I mean, yeah, true. I mean, the fact of the matter is if the development teams get fragmented, we had this chat with Kit Colbert last time, I think he's going to come on, and I think he's going to talk about his keynote in a few, in an hour or so. Development teams, is this, the cloud is heterogeneous, which is great. It's complex which is challenging. You need skilled engineering to manage these clouds. So if you're a CIO and you go all in on AWS, it's hard. Then to then go out and say, I want to be completely multi-vendor neutral, that's a tall order on many levels. And this is the multi-cloud challenge, right? So, so the question is, what's the strategy for me, the CIO, CIO or CISO, what do I do? I mean, to me, I would go all in on one and start getting hedges and start playing and then look Crystal at some- clear, Crystal clear to me. Go ahead. If you're a CIO today, you have to build a platform engineering team. No question. Because if we agree that we cannot tell in, uh, d d great developers what to do, we have to create a platform engineering team that using pieces of the super cloud can build, and let's make, let's make this very pragmatic and, and give examples. First, you need to be able to lay down the runtime, okay? So you need a way to deploy multiple different Kubernetes environment uh, in depending on the cloud. Okay, now we got that. The second That's like uh, table stakes. But that's a table stake, right? Yeah. But now, what, what is the advantage of, of having a, a super cloud uh, service to do that is that now you can put a, a, a policy in one place and it gets distributed everywhere consistently. So for example, you want to say, if anybody in this organization across all these different BUs, all these developers, I don't even know, build a PCI compliant microservice, they can only talk to PCI compliant microservice. Now, now I sleep tight, the developers still do that. Of course, they're going to get that, their hands slapped if they don't encrypt some messages. So, oh, that should have been encrypted. So number one. The second thing, I want to be able to say, this service that this developer built over there better satisfy this SLA. Uh, so if it, uh, the SLA is not satisfied, boom, automatically spin up uh, multiple instances to certify the SLA. Developers unencumbered, they don't even know. So this, I think, is a CIO build a platform engineering team using one of the many uh, super cloud services that allow you to do that and lay down. And, and part of that is that the vendor behavior is such because the incentives that they don't necessarily always work together. <laughs> I'll give you an example. We're going to hear today from uh, Western Union. They're an AWS shop, but they want to go to Google. They want to use some of Google's AI tools because they're good and maybe they're yep. even arguably better, but they're, they're also a Snowflake customer. And, and what you'll hear from them is Amazon and Snowflake are working together so that SageMaker can be integrated with Snowflake, but Google said, no, you want to use our AI tools, you got to use BigQuery. Yeah. Okay, so they say, ah, forget it. So if you have a platform engineering team, you can maybe solve some of that vendor vendor friction and get competitive advantage. I think the feature proximity concept I talk about is like when you're doing one thing, you want to do another thing, where do you go to get that thing, right? So that is very important. Like the, 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 your question, uh, John, is that your 
point is that AWS is ahead of the pack, which is true, right? They have the breadth of infrastructure, by a lot. Infra infrastructure as a service, right? They have breadth of services, right? So how do you, how, when do you bring in other cloud providers, right? So I believe that you should standardize on one cloud provider, like that's your primary, and for others, you bring them in on, on ad, as needed basis in the subsection or sub portfolio of your applications or your platforms. So, yeah, like the your Google platform? AI example. Yeah, I mean, or, exactly. or the Microsoft collaboration yeah. software example. I mean, there's always, or the M&A. Yeah, yeah, you're going to get- can run Windows, you can run Windows on Amazon, so. Uh, 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 by the way, super cloud doesn't mean that you cannot do that. So uh, the perfect example is, a, say that you're using Azure because you have a SQL server intensive workload yep. and you're using Google for ML, great. You, if you're using some differentiated feature of this cloud, you'll have to go somewhere and configure this widget. But what you can abstract with the super cloud is the lifecycle manage of the service that runs on top, right? So how does, does the service get deployed? Right? How do you monitor performance? How do you life cycle it? How you secure it? That you can abstract and that's the value. And eventually the, the value will win. So the customers will, will find what is the value? Is abstracting about, yeah. and, and making it uniform or going deep? How about identity? Like some take identity, for instance. You know, that's an, that's an opportunity to abstract, right? I use Microsoft identity or Okta. And I, can, and I can abstract that. Yeah, and that right? we have we have APIs and, and standards that we can use. So eventually, I think where there is enough pain, the right open source will emerge to solve but, that problem. Yeah, and I can but abstract you, things like uh, object store, right? That's pretty simple. But back right? to the back I mean, to the engineering question though, is that developers, developers, developers. One thing about developer psychology is if something's not right, they say, "Go get fix it. I'm not touching it until you fix it." They're very they're very sticky about if something's not working. They're not going to do it again, right? So you got to get it right for developers. I mean, they'll maybe tolerate something new, but is the juice worth the squeeze, as they say, right? So you can't go to a say, hey, it's, it's a work in progress. We're going to get our infrastructure together and the world's going to be great for you, but just hang tight. They're going to be like, get your shit together, then talk to me. So I think that to me is the question. It's an ops question, but where's that value for the developer in super cloud where the capabilities are there, there's less friction, it's simpler, it solves the complexity problem. I don't need these high skilled labor to manage Amazon. I got services exposed. That's what we the talked about earlier. It's, it's like the Walmart example. They basically, it was the, 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 they, 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 they took away from the developer the need to spin up infrastructure and worry about all the governance. I mean, it's not completely there yet. So the developer could focus on what he or she wanted to do. But there's a big, like in our industry, there's a big sort of flaw or the contention between developers and operators. Developers yeah, yeah. want to be on the cutting edge, right? And and operators want to be on the stability, you know, like we want governance, yeah, totally. this, right? So they want to control the developers are like these these little bratty kids, right? And they want Legos, like they want toys, right? Some of them want toys, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so they want Legos, they want to build it, they want to make a mess out of it. So you got to to make sure my my number one advice for in this context is that divvy up your application portfolio and or your platform portfolio if you are an ISV, right? So if you are ISV, you most, most probably you're building a platform these days. Do it up in a, in a way that you can say, the, this portion of our applications and or platform will adhere to what you're saying, standardization, you know, like Kubernetes, like slam dunk, you know, it works across clouds and in your data center, hybrid, you know, whole nine yards. But there is some subset on the next the next door, systems of innovation. Everybody has it. Doesn't matter if you're DMV of Kansas or you are, you are, um, uh, you know, uh, Metaverse, right? Or Meta company, right? Which is Facebook. They have it. They are building something new. For that, give them some freedom to choose different things, like play with non-standard things. So that is the mantra for for moving forward for any enterprise. Do you think developers are happy with the infrastructure now? Or are they wanting people to get their act together? I mean, what's your reaction? You De think, develop, think developers are happy as long as they, they can do their stuff, which is writing code. They want to write code and innovate. So to me, when Balmer said developer, 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 what he meant was all you other people get your act together so these developers can do their thing. And to me, the super cloud is the way 
for IT to get there and let developer be creative and go fast, why not without getting in trouble? Okay, let's wrap up this segment with a super clip. <laughs> okay, we're going to do a, a sound bite that we're going to make into a short video for each of you. All right. On you guys summarizing why super cloud's important, why this next wave is relevant for the practitioners, for the industry, and we'll turn this into an Instagram reel, YouTube short. So we'll call it a super clip. All right. Uh, Sarpy, you want you want some time to think okay. about it? You want to go first, Vittorio? You want to? Yep. I just did mine. No. no. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'll do it again. <laughs> go back. No, we want a fresh one. We we'll already got that one in the, in the can. Um, I will go. Sarpy, you go first. Go. What's your super clip? In in software systems, abstraction is your friend. I always say that abstraction is your friend. Even if you're a super professional developer, abstraction is your friend. We saw from the MFC library from C++ days to till today, abstract, use abstraction, do not try to reinvent what's already being invented. Leverage cloud, leverage the platform side of the cloud, not just infrastructure as a service, but platform as a service side of the cloud as well. And super cloud is a meta platform built on top of these infrastructure as service services from three or four or five the cloud providers. So use that and embrace the programmability, embrace the the abstraction layer. That that's the that's the key actually. And and developers who are true developers, or professional developers as you said, they know that. Awesome. Great super clip. Vittorio, another another shot at the plate here for super clip. Go. Multi-cloud is awesome. There's a reason why multi-cloud happened, is because it gave our developers the ability to innovate faster than ever before. So if you are embarking on a digital transformation journey, which I call a survival journey, if you're not innovating and transforming, you're not going to be around in business three, five years from now, you have to adopt the super cloud so the developer can be developer and keep building great, innovating digital experiences for your customers, and IT can get in front of it and not get in trouble together. Building those super apps with super cloud. That was a great super clip, Vittorio. Thank you for sharing. Thanks guys. Sorry, thanks for coming on. Talk about the Thank developer you. impact, super cloud too. On our next segment coming up right now, we're going to hear from Walmart Enterprise Architect, how they are building and they are continuing to innovate to build their own super cloud. Really informative, instructive from a practitioner doing it in real time. We'll be right back with Walmart here in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.